perfecting your quarter inch stitch on the Husqvarna Viking Brilliance 75Q could mean just trying out a few different settings and I'm going to give you the hints you need for needle choice, thread choice, should you use the straight stitch throat plate or not? And what other accessories that you can purchase might be best for you in your piecing journey. Now, we are the inventors of the Stitching Cosmos online course. We do a lot of piecing in that and with curves. So those are things that we help you master not only piecing, but over 25 different advanced sewing techniques on this machine. It's all sewing and it is a great way to explore even more. There's links below for you to check that out. And there are even free videos that you can watch within that course to see if that course is right for you. So let's break it down. I mentioned needles, I mentioned thread, and there's even a quarter inch stitch built into this machine. But it all comes down to first, what you are using as a ruler and for cutting. So I'm backing up even when you are cutting out your blocks. There is a time when your ruler might be on the older side. So if you have found that you have been using a ruler for 10 plus years, you will notice that that ruler edge has been actually shaved off enough that you're not even cutting your blocks accurately. Now, I do talk about rulers because we never use the grids on the mat to cut strips or squares. Those are not accurate. You get down to piecing and you will find that triangles and points don't line up. So what I'm giving you here are just some tips. You decide which ones you wanna adjust and how to win and what to try out that might give you more accurate seams. Now, here's the thing. If you are doing strips or squares or rectangles, you will find that as long as you are taking an accurate, consistent seam allowance, and you're doing that through the entire quilt, you'll be fine. But as soon as you throw in a triangle, that's when it matters. And also I will tell you curves. If you uh, deviate from a pre-cut curve and seam allowance, your block won't lay flat. So these are all things that we do teach and stress. So needles, let's talk about using a smaller needle. I am a fan of a Microtex size 70 needle. And also one of the quilting needles size 75 would be ideal. Now, as soon as you go to a smaller needle, you are needing to pick thinner thread. And my two favorites right now are the RFL weight 50 slash two. That is probably a go-to for most quilters because it's cotton. I, on the other hand, have a lot of isocord thread. It is a polyester. That means it has no lint for my machine, but it's also a thinner thread. You must have a thinner thread to use these smaller needles. If you're using a traditional weight thread, you're gonna, you can't use this small a needle, go with like a size 80 um, Microtex or quilting needle. So these two needles are sharper. So when you take all the time to pin all your intersections, when your needle actually dives into where it's thick, it actually will give you, with a sharper point, a more accurate finish and it won't kind of deviate. I know that sounds weird that a sharper needle will do that, but a universal needle will kind of come out a little sometimes sideways and not actually keep everything as precise as it should. So that's why I'm a fan of a sharper needle. The thinner thread makes it so when you are sewing your two layers together that you go to press it open, it doesn't create such a big ridge as you're trying to flatten that second piece out. You have a normal size thread, it's going to actually be taking up some of that seam allowance. And that's where people start talking about scant quarter inches and the importance of that. Okay, so thinner thread, it's gonna lie flat. So what about a scant quarter inch? Okay, so when we are given a quarter inch seam allowance or even a quarter inch foot, which by the way, there is a quarter inch foot that comes with this machine, okay? And the one that I'm holding is actually the same quarter inch foot but with a guide. So a guide to help keep your fabric from kind of scooting too far out to the side. So if that is something, if a guide is helpful for you, um, visit your local Husqvarna Viking store and they'll hook you up with that quarter inch edge stitching 
foot. But using your cur current foot, you have a quarter inch point to follow, but you can't let any fabric kind of come out beside it. And I think that was my problem when I started to do quilts is that I would like to see my fabric and then I was not only seeing it once, I was seeing it twice because there was two layers. And then when I pressed it open, my blocks weren't at that six and a half size that they're supposed to be. And my triangle points were starting to get lopped off when I started to sew blocks together. So you have to have your fabric underneath without showing. So you have to do that. Another option, if you're just using a regular um, you can do it with this foot just a little bit, but you can actually move your needle position one touch to the right and get a scant quarter inch. So that can actually help you um, allow for the pressing open that happens when you're actually done sewing. So keep that in mind. I'm gonna put that back. And yes, you can use a one notch to the side. The needle will move just slightly within this opening and it won't hit it. So that is something I love to teach my students to do. You can also use your regular presser foot, for example, foot A, and navigate over to your quilting menu. Touch and hold at that top go to, it's actually menu D, and the reason an easy way I remember it is because the first stitch actually shows right there in the little picture a straight stitch and it says one quarter inch next to it. That means the very first stitch in this menu is the quarter inch stitch and it moves the needle all the way over to the exact position that you can use the edge of your foot A with. Now, if you wanna do one little bit more, you are welcome to add one more touch to the needle position, and it moves it from the 2.3 location to the 2.5 location. You find out which one works best for you. So with those accurately cut blocks with that new ruler you just bought, and then <laughs> measure like what is the outcome. So did you actually get the exact size you're looking for? Maybe you switched to the, some thinner thread and that is helping. Maybe you're now using a sharper needle and that is helping for you. Now, I am a fan of the straight stitch throat plate, but not with this stitch. So you can't do it with this stitch. So you're back at your normal stitch number one in the A menu. And because once you put this on, you really don't want to have your needle moved much. You know, now that I'm looking at it, you probably could just, you will have to turn off the setting for the straight stitch throat plate and you'll be able to conquer that. So I'm hoping I'm giving you some suggestions from changing to a different foot using, try it with your regular foot, try with some thinner thread. By the way, I'll put some links to these two threads where you can find like the cream or gray, whichever one you're used to sewing with. Purchase a nice quality thread. Oh, by the way, when you wind thinner thread on your bobbin, you're gonna get more yardage on your bobbin. So that means you won't be switching out bobbins as often. Oh, and one more trick. I just have to tell you this because this is so fun. Once you find, like, let's say this is your favorite thread. If you bought two spools of this thread next time you buy it, and you take one, oh, and a pack of bobbins, buy yourself an extra pack of bobbins. You take one of the spools and wind all the bobbins from that second spool. Fill them all the way up. That way when you go bobbin to spool, they all will empty about the same time. And that is just a time saver. So um, <laughs> something to just think about. If that makes sense to you, it's a very efficient way to do piecing. And then you don't have to wind bobbins because they're all set to do. So I hope you'll check out our Stitching Cosmos courses. Links below to threads and needles. I'll put some of those. And then visit your local Husqvarna Viking store if you find that having a guide on your foot would be the most helpful. And leave a comment below of which one worked best for you to perfect your quarter inch stitch.